All right. Welcome back to the One Bar in Lapagas show. I am Lapagas. And a big day for Minnesota Vikings today as they had a joint practice with the Denver Broncos. A lot of familiar faces returning to uh, TCO Performance Center. You got um, George Patton, the, the former GM assistant. You got Teddy Bridgewater, Mike Boone. Um, shit, there's a whole bunch more. Uh, Bush Jones was back in town. So a lot of... Uh, a lot of former Minnesota Vikings returning to their old stomping grounds today. So um, a lot of things went down, and I got some scattered notes from Courtney Cronin and Will Riggs. I'm going to share with you guys. Uh, this is not a very cohesive list. It's it's bits and pieces pasted together. Um, so sit back, enjoy. Uh, again, remember, hashtag swag. We'll be doing drawing very, very soon. We did hit the 3,600, but do not stop dropping that swag. Um, because we have not yet done the drawing. We'll do it soon, though, I promise. All right, so let's get into the joint practice. Overall, uh, sounds like both offenses kind of struggled. The defenses were looking much better, um, but we'll delve into it a little bit more. Um, first of all, some guys who did not per participate today on the Viking side. Christian Derrissa was out. Mike Zimmer did say he doesn't think he's probably going to play Saturday for the preseason game. Uh, Daniel Hunter was out, Justin Jefferson out, Nate Stanley might as well just cut his ass right now. He was standing in street clothes with the quarterbacks as they all warmed up. I don't see any reason to keep that guy around. Um, so I expect when the first cuts are made, he will be one of them. Um, so those are the guys who were out. Uh, Greg Joseph, uh, he was six for six today, which is a, a bright spot. Uh, sounds like he's going to get all the kicking duties in preseason game one. So I uh, expect to see Greg Joseph out there week one. I'm, I'm wondering if he'll be Rally Patterson then. Uh, the second week we'll see but um i like the idea of getting them each a game and then letting that final game maybe be split and figuring out who your kicker is going to be uh the vikings offensive line overall struggled very very badly today um didn't look good getting really kind of manhandled the, the broncos do have a pretty strong defensive line you got bradley chubb von miller on that thing so not an easy task but only udo did have a good day he moved some guys around created some holes uh, especially for alexander madison in one play so Udo continues to impress. Um, speaking of impressive, it was the Minnesota Vikings defensive line. Supposedly just looked absolutely dominant. Uh, led by, by far, the most impressive player of them all was Michael Pierce. Uh, supposedly this guy was just blowing guys out of their shoes, uh, creating interior pressure, stuffing runs. Michael Pierce, uh, everything as advertised and more probably with his performance today. And, you know, this, this Broncos interior line is, is is no joke. You got Dalton Reisner, hell of a player, the, the rookie, uh, Lloyd Cushenberry is in there. So there's some good players right in there. Um, so definitely not an easy task. When Michael Pierce blew him out of the water. Uh, Armand Watts it was super impressive as well, stuffing runs. So you got Delvin Thompson. Dylan Hunter didn't even play. Uh, Weatherly really also looked good. I think I saw that. But you got this line with their star player out, and they're still – uh, dominating so his D line is going to be amazing, but the bad thing is, as good as the D line looked, the corners looked as bad. You got good, and then you got very bad here. Uh, Bashan Breland, I guess he allowed a number of catches, was called for at least one penalty. Cam Dancer had a nice pass breakup at one point, but got beaten twice by something called Devontress Dukes, some scuzz ass wide receiver who's probably not going to make the team, probably going to end up on a practice squad smoking. The needle cam dancer, not great. Um, Mackenzie Alexander walked off the field at one point looking to favor a hamstring. I have not heard much about that since initially reading about that. Speaking of Mac Alexander, him and Josh Metellos got in a fight with Caden Stearns. I did like Caden Stearns coming out of college, and uh, he's one guy I would not mess with one bit. Took two of them to even try to take him down, but that was quickly broken up. Josh Metellos, Mac Alexander scuffing scuffing it up with the denver broncos uh the big big sad, sad news to come out of today's practice was blake prohl uh one-on-ones his knee absolutely buckled looks like the thing just collapsed from what i've read uh not great the guy is just coming off a great scrimmage last saturday now he has this catastrophic injury that sounds like it's going to put his rookie year in jeopardy probably going to go on the ir just I'll say it's a blessing to this guy because obviously he wants to stay healthy and make a practice squad and continue to, to work every day in practice. But as good as he was looking, probably still a long shot to make the roster. But now he, the Vikings can keep him. They can put him on IR and keep him in the system. So uh, hopefully you hope he's okay, has 100% recovery, and it doesn't, you know, 
destroy his NFL career and aspirations. But uh, really, really, I don't like this one at all. I was a big Blake Pro guy. Uh, he was kind of my favorite of the undrafted wide receivers. And to see him go down definitely hurts still up against his heart. Um, moving on here, backup quarterbacks look good. Browning was solid, made some nice throws. Kellen Mond also, despite you know missing all those games with the COVID, he came out. Uh, I know he hit Zach Davis in the back of the end zone, a nice little touch pass there. So nice to see Kellen Mond stepping right back and looking like he didn't miss a beat. Um, what did miss a beat today was the Minnesota Vikings punt returners. Chad Beebe, Amir Abdullah got a lot of looks, a lot of work, and they muffed a shit ton of punts from what I could read. Uh, it was windy, tough conditions, but um, not great for especially Chad Beebe. Uh, you know, he was muffing a lot of punts when he was given the job. A guy who um, I really don't even want to see back there anymore at this point. So everything I've read, everybody's praying D.D. Westbrook comes back so he can be the punt returner this year. I don't know. I think he's definitely a guy who's going to be IR'd. I, I think what is it, the shortest thing to do is a couple games now. I think he'll make uh, the roster as an injured reserve designation and then get called up some point early in the season. But I don't think he's ready to go yet. But I, I don't like to see Abdullah and BB not looking great at that. I don't want any of them, either one of them back there, to be honest. Uh, finally, I heard a little bit from Cam Bynum, who had a nice breakup today, nice play. Um, and then a couple of guys who also stood out on defense were Patrick Jones and Hercules Amata Afa. And uh, supposedly White Davis looked good. So I know he's the last guard listed on the unofficial depth chart. But again, the fact that he got in there, play against somebody new and held his own is, is uh, encouraging to say the least. So those are your news nuggets and nuts from the Minnesota Vikings joint scrimmage or joint practice with the Denver Broncos. They'll do that again tomorrow. And then I don't know if they'll have a day off or whatever the hell happens in those scrimmage or the preseason game will be on Saturday. So that's it. Uh, if you left any, if I left anything out, be sure to drop in the comments. Remember hashtag swag. And also remember to keep your skull in your hole. <laughs>